Hello, my name is Nicole, and I'm taking this time out to talk to those of you all who are fathers that are not presently with your sons, but you are trying to make the arrangements to get your sons in your care. I commend you for that. I also would like to address those individuals who have not been taking up the time with their sons because they have been too busy working, because they have had some unfortunate situations that have happened, but you are working on getting them at least one day mentally and, of course, physically, because it is a process, isn't it? It's a process to get your mind right to be able to handle children, especially if they are young. I am a mother of four sons, so I am on both sides. I'm one who doesn't have two of her sons with her often, and then I have two sons that I'm with every day. So I get to see the two younger ones, practically babies, if you will, go through their motions and work your nerves. Then I get to see the two older ones who are self-sufficient so much to the point where sometimes they have their words that they say. So, you see, we go through changes when we have been in previous relationships and they don't work out and then we have children. And some people who think they know it all, who don't have children of their own, who have never been through situations like this, believe that they can say what they want to say about it and that their tips and trips and everything else can help us out. But can I tell you, unless you have walked in our shoes, missing your children, trying to work something out with the parent who has your children, um, you know, if you've been through similar situations like this, then yeah, you have something to talk about. But if you haven't, then it's just best to be quiet. In another audio, I talked about fools. And one thing that I learned about fools is that they talk a lot. But when it comes down to actually giving you some information to help you, they can't do that. They're too busy trying to make you laugh. They're too busy trying to take you out and, um, you know, give you that good time, make you feel good. But when you're trying to get your family together, when you're trying to raise children, there comes a point where all the laughing has to stop, where all the drinking and good times and dancing and kicking it with this one and that one has to stop. And so for those serious minded individuals, this one is for you. All right, now we're going to go into the scriptures. We're going to talk about some things dealing with this uh, business of family and we're also going to talk about some of the foolish things that God has uh, shown us and maybe somehow, some way, some of you all that just don't quite know what you want to do, where your children are concerned, will um, see the light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6, it says, Children's children are a crown to the aged. And parents are the pride of their children. That's why you hear so many people talking about their children. Because for some, they realize that there is something to be proud of when you bring a little me into the world, whether it be a daughter or a son. There is something about looking at your child's eyes and seeing the best part of you. Now, if you have problems with who you are and you don't like yourself and you don't like the kind of person that you've become and you've got these hang-ups from childhood, then, of course, you're not going to see the beauty in being a parent. You're not even going to see looking at the eyes of your little self being anything more than a burden. And so for you, I would say that you definitely need to be in prayer and draw near to the Lord and allowing him to deal with your heart. Get around like-minded individuals that believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And pray and ask the Lord to help you see the joy in being a parent. Help you get over past issues. Cause you to get to that peace of mind where you say, guess what? I am no longer 
about what my daddy did, what my mom did, but I'm about what can I do? What can I do for my son? What can I do for my daughter? You see, in Proverbs 17, 21, it says to have a fool for a son brings grief. There is no joy for the father of a fool. And so you may be one of them that your father saw you doing a whole bunch of foolish things and you brought grief to him. Or maybe your father was a fool and brought grief to you. So now is your opportunity to reach back and say, I'm not going to raise my son or raise my daughter in the way that I was raised. I'm going to turn the situation around. I'm going to bind generational curses. And I suggest you get around praying individuals who will lay hands on you and will bind those spirits of darkness in Jesus name. Now, family, family, God wants us to be mindful of our families. He wants us to be mindful of them because we can learn a lot from them, whether we're there with them or not. You see, because there's a lot said even when there's nothing said. There's a lot said when the mother's not picking up the phone telling you about your son. Okay? There evidently is something going on and she's just not telling you all the details. Okay? And sometimes it's because she feels like you're not interested because you kept telling her about the job that you had to get to. You kept telling her about this one and that one giving you problems. So she said, well, guess what? I'm not going to be a problem for him. I am just going to deal with issues on my own. And let me tell you something, fathers. She's taking your son into the bathroom with her when she's going to the bathroom if she has a little one. Okay? There's a lot that goes on in the women's bathroom. There's women talking about this issue and that issue. They're prepping themselves. Sometimes they're leaving behind their dirt, if you will. Now, that should be enough for some fathers to say, you know what, I need to start taking my child to the bathroom and stop letting his mother take him to the bathroom. Because there comes a point where the little boy starts observing what's going on around him. There comes a point where a little boy says, what's that, mommy? And then the mother tries to explain the best way she knows how. But you see, if daddy is in the picture, daddy doesn't have to worry too much about what his son is being exposed to because he is schooling him. He's training him. He's getting him prepared for those surprises in life. You see, there's too many sons and daughters that's hanging on mom's coattail so much to the point where even the sons are starting to act like the daughters. They're acting like the mothers they're acting like the aunts and then the man wants to get upset and says why is it that my son is acting like this effeminate male why is he acting like he's gay why is he acting like a sissy you see it's it's a problem for a lot of folks particularly those that do tend to act like females when people talk this way because they're saying, look, I couldn't help my situation because my daddy wasn't there. My daddy wasn't there to take up time with me. He was too busy working. He was too busy chasing women. He was too busy doing things that he knows was going to put him in jail. So, you know, if I act like my mama, well, if I act like my aunt, well, you see, and if you, being a father of a very young child, can be able to get in there and start talking the talk and walking the walk and proving to that mother that you can indeed care for your son and your daughter, then maybe she'll work with you, you see. I mean, me being a mother, I had to, to a certain degree, I had to show that I was trustworthy where my two older sons was concerned. Could he trust that I wasn't going to put any dolls in front of him? Could he trust that I wasn't going to try to start dressing him in uh, pink? Could he trust that I was going to sit down and have a conversation with him that wasn't going to make him feel like he was less than a boy? Could he trust me? You see, there's moms asking you, fathers, can I trust you? Can I really trust you this time? Or is our baby going to end up over your girlfriend's house? 
is my baby going to end up over mama's house because you see he was already over there earlier this week and now it's your turn to watch him and you got him over mama's house you see your family is supposed to be important to you your family is supposed to be a backbone if you will you're supposed to have some folks around you that got your back. Not when you do dirt, but when you're just in a place where you're just feeling down and out. You shouldn't expect anybody to clean up your dirt. You shouldn't expect anybody to clean up your mess now. that's That right there is taking advantage. We're taking advantage when we get ourselves in trouble and then we look around and say, Oh yeah, you're going to help me. You're going to help me through this. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You see, in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. It isn't any coincidence that some women want their men to read the Bible. It isn't any coincidence that some love, Christ-loving women want their men to go to church. It isn't any coincidence. Because, see, God has something on the inside of us that triggers certain things, that causes us to want to do right. We come to a place where we stop wanting to do wrong. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You have to ask yourself, Have I forgiven the mother of my children? Have I forgiven the father of my children? Or am I still bitter because he cheated on me? Am I still bitter because she lied? Am I still bitter because he promised to do some things and then, of course, he left me alone with our children? So, you know, you've got to ask yourself these questions. And if you still got this anger on the inside, then you know what you need to do. You need to be drawn near to the Lord. You need to be praying more. You need to be giving up some things in your life that's keeping that anger going. Talking to the girlfriends, talking to the guy friends can keep that anger going. Talking to that mother who will never, ever, ever, ever like your man will keep that fire going. Talking to that mother who, no matter who you pick, she is never satisfied will keep that bitterness going. It's time to cut some people off. Somebody needs to tell themselves right now, I need to cut some people off. Because all the evil speaking, all it's doing is keeping you away from your son and or your daughter. All the evil speaking is getting to the ears of the Lord. And when he hears this, all those prayers that you've been praying just don't come to pass. You better repent. And turn from your wicked ways. Yes, Father, your job is to train up a child. Yes, Mother, your job your job is also to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Are we really training up our children in the word of the Lord? Are we really putting music in front of them, television shows in front of them, things that glorify righteousness? Or are we going along with the status quo, going along with what's popular? Are we taking up time to sit down with our children and ask them the hard questions? Are you angry with me for what took place? Are you willing to do what is right in school so that we can be able to work together or is part of your doing wrong because you're mad at your dad or you're mad at me ask the hard questions ask them what makes them feel good and what doesn't make them feel good ask them what's going on during the day other than the typical what did you learn in school let's be specific and then in time, as we develop that basic conversation, then we can ask them to do more like take out the trash, clean this off, wipe that, put this up. 
You see, we've got to build up that relationship with them first where they feel comfortable enough to talk to us before we start giving them a list of things they should be doing and shouldn't be doing. Too many fathers are so, so quick to discipline their children, so quick to pick up a, a belt or pick up a shoe or pick up a paddle. So many mothers are quick to take their hand and smack a child. So easy, it's so easy to do all these things. But so hard to just sit down and ask them, what do you think of me? Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. If you didn't honor your mother and father, then why would you expect your child to honor you? You see, you've got to look at your situation, deal with it, fix it, make rights wrong, and then go and start teaching children on what it means to be respectful. Sometimes we've got some anger going on on the inside of us that somehow creeps into our relationship with our children. It was bad enough that it caused our relationship with the father or with the mother to go haywire, but now the kids are affected by our mother and father and what kind of relationship we have with them. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says, And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So if I'm whooping on my child and I'm getting all up in his face and I'm cussing at him and telling him this, that, and the other, then what am I doing? Hmm? I'm provoking him. And then one day he's going to want to challenge me, right? Well, that's what happens. That's what happens that's what happens with a lot of us. We got to that place where we got sick and tired of mom and dad berating us about one thing or another. And then we got a little bit stronger, a little bit taller. And then we said, guess what? I can take you out. At least we said it in our minds because some of us wasn't stupid enough to say it with our mouth. But then nowadays, because of all of the laws that are out here that tells us that we are not to put our hands on our children all that does is give them more reason to want to start something, start a fight that they're, they're not going to be able to win. So it's just best to train up a child, right? Train up a child. Let's sit down and let's talk about some things. And if you want to get really, really uh, indignant with me, huh, son, daughter, then we can start taking some stuff away. And there's plenty of things, right, that you can use for leverage, mother, father. And I tell you that if we keep on, though, if we keep on in this place of I know it all and nobody can tell me anything and all I want is my son and all I want is my daughter. If we keep on with that type of attitude, all we're doing is quarreling and with ourselves and with those around us. And in Proverbs 17, verse 19, it says, he who loves a quarrel loves sin. He who builds a high gate invites destruction. So you're inviting all sorts of problems in the future. That's when the revenge comes into play. That's when she starts hanging up the phone and don't want you to talk to your child because she knows what you're going to do. You've got to change up. You've got to do something different. Instead of coming at her like you always come at her, why don't you just be nice? Why don't you start with a card in the mail? Then from a card in the mail, it may be a little gift for your son and then Maybe uh, you come up with some other thing like um, I'm going to be there at such and such time. And not only do you say that, but you mean it. Matter of fact, if you say you're going to be there at X, Y, Z time, show up 20 minutes early just to let her know that you mean business. And when she says bring them back at such and such time, then bring them back at such and such time until she can trust you. You see, it's not that she doesn't really want you to see your son. It's because she don't trust you. You've got to build up trust. She didn't trust you in a relationship and somehow it, it went off into this relationship with your child now. And now she don't trust you with him either or with her. So build up the relationship first before you start talking about all of these grandioso plans as far as trying to get your family back and do this and do that. People who don't trust other people put their guard up when you start talking a whole lot of talking and then they don't see a whole lot of walking. 
So those of you all who are parents who just really want that connection with your children and you want some peace between the father or the mother of your children, please do heed this advice. Please do get into that word of the Lord. Please do go to a local church because I'll tell you it does wonders. It does wonders for your situation if folks know that you are in the church and you're active in the church and you're doing some things in your local community and you're trying to build up your reputation, you know, and you're making sacrifices, it does wonders. So I hope that those of you all who are feeling down and out, I pray that this gives you some light at the end of the tunnel. And as always, may God richly bless you.